So we're going to hit record. Well, welcome. People may join us as we get started, um, but I appreciate that you guys are here right at noon. So we're going to go ahead, start, and hopefully get you some information. I don't think we have a full hour here, but I wanted to leave plenty of time for questions and ideas. And, you know, this is kind of uncharted territory for everybody in the beauty spa and wellness industry. So um, I wanted to make sure there was plenty of time for discussion. I did unmute you guys. So if you want to just talk, you are absolutely welcome to, or you can use the chat box. It doesn't matter to me. Um, but but yeah, let's go ahead and get started so that we're not wasting time. I know everyone has a time crunch here to get themselves going quickly. So we're going to go ahead and get started um, and talk about how to get your programs digital. First thing is just who am I? In case you don't know me, my name is Teresa Muley. I am a consultant. Um, I go to schools and I audit them and I tell them and show them different areas of opportunity and then ultimately uh, help them kind of get their programs where they want to go um, as well as a speaker. So I go and train teachers is my passion, speak at all the conferences, that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm also a student. I am earning a doctorate right now in education, higher education, and my mission in life is to create a voice for career colleges and cosmetology schools and show the world that we matter. So that's who I am. But today is not about that. It's about how we get our programs going as quickly as possible online. Um, as most things happen in the world, we are being forced to make a change right now. And I think a lot of people aren't quite prepared on how to make a cosmetology program, barber program, spa, whatever it might be. Uh, digital. So that's what we're going to talk about today. It's kind of give you guys some tips. If you have ideas or you've tried something already that's working, please share it. That's kind of the point is that we're in this together and we want to make sure that everybody has the options that they need. So um, force change. It forces us to be creative, huh? So I'm going to give you a five-step plan of success uh, to hopefully kind of get you started in a direction. And then from there, feel free to reach out to me with questions. If you want to have a call, if you need help creating things, just let me know. It is what I do. Um, and hopefully together we can get your schools live so you don't have to miss a beat as you move forward. Okay, so step one, if you haven't done so, contact your accrediting body. Have you done that already? Um, have you reached out to your state? Do you guys know exactly what your states are requiring and allowing? Um, whether you are accredited by ACCSE, NACIS, or COE, um, everybody's giving updates right now on what you can do and how to accept distance hours because they recognize we are in a position that we could lose our schools if we don't do this. Um, even states that have never allowed it before are now allowing distance ed. So first step is contact your accrediting body, contact your state, figure out exactly what they're allowing because right now they're kind of scrapping the rule book and creating new rules. They have to in order for these schools to survive. So um, that's of course the first step is contact your accrediting body. I work closely with ACCSC so I can probably give you some guidance there if you need it. NACUS is not that different, so, um, you know, um, I, if you don't know where to look, I can, I'm sure I can help you figure out where to look and get the information, but NACUS, ACCSC, COE, they're all making changes as, as well as the states so that you can do this, so that's, of course, step one. But then you get into the nitty gritty of dissecting your curriculum. Uh, most of what we do is hands on. So there's this weird little thing like, how do we decide what we can count and how do we count it and how do we verify it? So, some things to think about when you're dissecting curriculum. First, focus on theory. It is the easiest thing to deliver um, through the internet, right? We can do videos, we can do projects. Um, I'm gonna ask the two of you, like what platform are you using? Are you a Milady school? Are you a Pivot Point school? Do you have Lab? Do you have MindTap? What, I'm gonna keep talking, but if you guys can go ahead and answer on the chat so that I can address those. Um, what is your platform and are you using any digital platforms right now to help you guys? So that's the first question um, because we can take those and we can build on what's there to really give you a robust curriculum for whether it be 24 hours a week, 40 hours a week, whatever it might be. So we've got one person on MindTap and Noelia, what, what are you guys using? Are you a Milady school? Are you a Pivot Point school? Um, and are you online yet? Yeah, MindTap and Blackboard. Awesome. So MindTap, um, that's great that you guys have it because I know Milady's is now offering it for free I think up to four months but you can take what you have on MindTap and you can kind of increase it enhance the theory portion with projects videos that kind of stuff and I'll show you an example here in a second so that's the first thing is take what you have use your MindTap resources the videos and the ebook and the worksheets and all the stuff that's on there and then enhance it so that it takes a little more time because 
ultimately it's very easy to track theory through assignments, not as easy to track practical work. So try to load up at least for the next six to eight weeks on theory if you can. Create digital worksheets. So if you have access to Adobe Pro, um, you can create any worksheet you want digitally so that a student can actually fill it in on their phone, on their tablet, on their laptop, and then email it right back to you. It doesn't require any printing, okay? So then if you wanna create extra assignments, you can do it through that. If you don't have Adobe Pro, I think a subscription for a year is like $160. This would be the time that's probably worth it because you can create every document you want and students don't have to print anything as well as your instructors. They don't have, you don't have to worry about them having digital capabilities at home in terms of printing and that kind of stuff. So creating digital worksheets, assignments, that kind of stuff, which again, I'll show you an example here in a second of what I mean. Um, give very specific parameters and instructions. Our students are not typically known for being self-directed. They are not students that loved high school. There's a reason they didn't go to college. A lot of times it's, it's not about brains. It's about that they wanted to get to something with their hands on and they were very directed and structured and they can just get through and get to work, right? So making sure we give instructions to students for projects that are very specific of what you're looking for them is important. Otherwise, you're gonna get 15,000 phone calls and emails every day saying, well, what am I supposed to do? Why do I need to do this? all that kind of stuff. So again, I'll show you guys some examples here in a second. Really important, <laughs> scrap what you've always done or what you always do and determine what is the easiest to teach for the next eight weeks. I would not start teaching haircuts from home if you can, okay? You and I, you guys know, one haircut too far and they've lost the mannequin. The mannequin is dead, right? So try to do things like, and we'll get there in a second, but styling and that kind of stuff. So scrap what you've done. If your curriculum tells you, oh, you're spending the next six weeks on haircutting, maybe you need to shift it. Maybe you need to refocus and, and start working on hairstyling or makeup applications or anything that they can do, scalp treatments, you know, even color retouches they can do from home, foils they can do from home, right? So scrap what you've always done and really look at what can I, how can I teach the most students for the next six to eight weeks that will work for everybody without having to um, have them doing something that could really in, impede their future growth as a student. So just really think about that. And then consider online assignments for theory using Quizlet and quizzes and the other flashcard apps. So um, I know a curriculum, an online curriculum that I'm writing with the school right now, uh, one of the cohorts is going to have to do nail disorders and skin disorders. Well, what a great uh, um, assignment is that they need to go create their own flashcard set, send me the link. It's doing two things. First of all, it's, t it's clocking time for them, right? It's made, that should take them an hour or two hours. It's time that I can actually account for. And then they have to provide me this link and it's going to help them learn and memorize those things. So it's going to help for state boards for sure. So consider those types of things too get creative with your assignments. So I gave an example right here um, of an assignment that I created for a school this week called the Influencer Project. Um, and I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of how creative you can get with these uh, these ancillary assignments. I myself have had a lot of fun actually writing these because I'm like, oh man, these are so cool. I would like to do this in my own programs. Um, but giving students research projects is going to be key because it takes up time. It builds curiosity for them. It shows them something beyond the textbook and it keeps them interested in what they're doing, right? So the influencer project, you can see I gave an objective so that they understood exactly why they were doing this project. Then I gave them the project with very specific questions that they have to answer so that at the end when they report their findings to us, we know that they didn't just like, you know, grab a couple of influence and say, yeah, they're cool. I like them. No, actually give them things to answer about these people, right? And then you'll see if anyone's taken any of my webinars before or watched any of my videos, I'm a big advocate of giving students options in how they present the material, especially career college students. So I give them a choice. You can present your findings in the following way. They can do a research report. If you've got a student who loves to write cool, they can do two to three pages of report. If they love to be on video, they can record a video of themselves actually presenting the information. They can write a PowerPoint and get creative with graphics and do it that way. Or they can actually record their own webinar if they want and do something like that. Each of these has a rubric that is provided to the student, and I can always provide those to you guys if you want them, that basically says, you know, shows them exactly what they'll be graded on to make sure that they've completed it. So that is 
just an idea and I did it for um, makeup influencer that's this one I did a natural nails influencer project I did a long hair design master's research project where you know if they choose Martin Parsons or Sharon Blaine or Sambia whoever it might be they actually have to do background research and write a little bio or do a little bio video on it so get really creative if you need ideas I mean this is what I love to do so absolutely after this reach out to me and we can continue chatting about this stuff so that's an idea of one of the projects that I had come up with, but there's so many that you can do, especially if you do digital worksheets and that kind of stuff. Okay, then you have to determine how you're going to track the practical work. This gets fuzzy with the states, guys, being able to say, okay, I know that they spent one hour on this style. So uh, for one school, and I'm happy to provide it to you, I did create kind of a, a breakdown of what I thought each service would be. So like if they did a style, I would say they spent, they should have spent about 30 minutes on it, right? If they did a scalp treatment, they should have spent about 15 minutes on it. Um, so that we had some guidelines basically um, as we were creating these. So what you can also see here is kind of, a, and I'll get, I'll go into detail on this in a second, but a daily worksheet that the student fills out. And you can see to the left, I actually allocated how much time each thing should take. And once they've completed it, then I can justify to my accreditor and to the state, well, this should have taken this much time. So that's what I gave them. Okay. So the first thing is YouTube videos. So what some schools are doing is students have to create a YouTube channel. They have to actually upload videos of themselves doing the practical work onto YouTube and then they send the teacher their link at the end of the day with all those videos, okay? So key to this is if you're gonna use YouTube videos for verification that at the begin beginning of every video, they say, my name is Teresa Muley, today is March 24th and I uh, it's 10 o'clock and I'm starting a hairstyle. And they video themselves doing it, even if it's a time-lapse. Honestly, if they don't wanna upload a 20 minute video, they can do a time-lapse video. It still shows them physically doing the work. Um, and then they upload it and they have to have a Google email to do it, which is totally free, but they can upload it and send the link. So that's one way to verify that they've done the work themselves is a YouTube video. You can, depending on how much you want to be on the computer, you can do live conference sessions where every student's logging in at the same time. It's called a synchronous session. Um, and you do a demo and then they all do it from their kitchen or wherever they are and you're watching them do it right live at that time. So that's an option. It does take, I mean, pretty strong internet capability to be online doing that for four or five hours, but it's absolutely an option to verify that the student has done the work themselves is do live conference sessions. You can do Dropbox videos. So I shied away with this with one school. I think the more apps we make them download, the harder this is going to get. But, um, you know, I mean, it's you just, just it's another option. If students are comfortable at Dropbox instead of YouTube, they don't want to put their things live, they can Dropbox a video to you. They can't really email them to you. They're too big. So Dropbox is free um, as long as they don't put too much on there, but they can always delete after they have sent it to you. So that's another option is Dropbox if you have a more advanced group of students with technology. Um, something to really think about how lenient is your accrediting body. A lot of schools that I've talked to are struggling because the states are the, the issue. The states are the ones saying, oh, well, how are you going to verify this kind of stuff? So um, what you can see to the left is a verification verification worksheet that I've created for a school. And literally, the teacher, the student puts their name at the top. The teacher marks off when it's been submitted and complete so that the teacher has verified that that's been done. And then the teacher signs at the bottom. We're saving every one of these worksheets, and they're going to go in the student's file. So if they're there's any question from the state or from the accrediting body of how we awarded the hours, we can pull up that worksheet and show them this is how we did it. Our licensed professionals determined that this is how long it took and then they verified through video. So there is a way to do it, guys. Um, this is what we've submitted to ACCSC and they did accept it. And NACUS is so similar. I guarantee you, I shouldn't guarantee you, I, I promise you though that there's they're likely to accept it also. They're being pretty flexible right now. They have to be for us, okay? And then think about assigning practical work that requires minimal supplies. It's if you don't give perm rods in your kit, it's not fair to ask a student to do a perm where they have to go purchase perm rods somewhere, right? So think about things like styles. They can always do a blow dry or an updo or a roller set or curling iron, whatever. They can always do scalp treatments. They have conditioner in their in their shower, I guarantee you. They can even do mock retouches for relaxers, for hair color, and most students have foils in their house. So let's be real, if they have the foils, they can do foils too. They can use conditioner or something like that for it. So try to schedule work 
that is going to not take a lot of supplies. And I mean schedule it. Like if you look at the assignment to the left, guys, I put very specifically complete two complete makeup looks, right? And um, when I was doing one that there was, maybe it was a senior student, I was like, you complete four hairstyles. And then I know that's two hours of work that you've completed, but be very specific in how they should spend their time so that you know what to expect each day. Okay, so the next thing is to consider is building in synchronous sessions. So whether they're weekly, daily, or for longer periods throughout the day, have students meet digitally with their teachers. Um, a synchronous session is kind of what we're doing right now, um, but usually with video chat instead. So they're actually, you know, live and video and they're act you can see them, they can see you. Um, and that way you can see them actively engaging in things. So build in synchronous sessions. My suggestion is to at least do a homeroom session every week, maybe the beginning of the week or every day if that's how you want to do it. It can even be just 30 minutes of here's what you need to be doing. Here's the expectations of the week. These are your assignments for the week. You have a test next week, making sure that they are prepared to learn for the week. So we definitely build in synchronous sessions so that you are kind of having that face-to-face -face time with them, even though you're not actually live with them, okay? So something to remember. Um, synchronous sessions can go through GoToMeeting, Zoom. You can use Skype also. It's just these two are the ones I'm most comfortable with. Doesn't matter which platform you use, it's time to subscribe to a conferencing platform. You don't have to do it forever, but in a situation like this, it is literally going to help build accountability for students and keep students and retain students. It's going to be really hard to retain students right now, guys. So you want to make sure that they see your face and that they're talking to their instructors. So just remember in a synchronous session, have an agenda for every session. This is, this should not be a like, oh, we're just going to check in and see how you are. Nope. Make sure every teacher has an agenda of what needs to be discussed in the session. Set expectations weekly, if not daily. I mean, these students are not typically self-directed. We have to every day kind of go through with them. Hey, this is what you're working on today. By the end of the day, I expect to see this from you. I need three links. I need all of your work done in MindTap. I need your report done on this, right? Make sure you set those expectations verbally to them. You can teach theory through these methods if you want. Like I'm doing a webinar, a live webinar with you all right now. It's recording. I will upload it later. And that's the other thing is if you record them, you can upload them to your school's YouTube and then students that couldn't make the synchronous session can still go watch it and get the information. So you can teach theory this way if you want to. You can use your PowerPoints. I'm sharing a screen with you right now. Do that with students and then they still get the benefit of kind of hearing you talk through the information. And that's why we're, that's why we're so good at what we do, right? We share experiences. Um, and the other thing you can do with synchronous sessions is offer virtual tutoring. You can do that through FaceTime. You can do that through Facebook chat too. But and you give people, your, your students, your personal information. I'm not keen on that. So if you um, do it through Zoom or GoToMeeting, if you have a student who's really struggling with this self-study, uh, you can actually do one-on-one -on -one sessions with them. Schedule them. It's not a free-for-all, but absolutely offer either group tutoring or one-on-one -on -one tutoring with students through, um, through the internet now, okay? And then number five is finally organize your administration. So it's all fine and dandy if you can organize your curriculum, like I said, focusing on theory, building in extra assignments, um, coming up with an accountability worksheet to make sure that everything is you know, accounted for and that the students are getting the hours they deserve. But you still have to figure out who's gonna organize and manage this because it's not fair to expect your teachers to know how to do this and how to manage it effectively. It's not in their wheelhouse. They're not trained to do that. Um, so make sure you have set something up or you have someone kind of in charge of managing um, some key areas. So first is grades. So who's going to enter the grades? Are you using FAME? Are you using a different type of grading um, or you know, school system or G5 system for your school? Um, who's entering the grades? So what I've seen a group of schools do is they have one person on each campus. It's actually an administrative coordinator, not a teacher, who is responsible for entering all of the grades for the campus. Um, and they're using a digital grade book, grade book called ThinkWave. It's free, you can use it too. Um, and then that way, the teachers at the end of every day are putting in the grades from the day and then they can go in, access it, and just upload all the grades for everybody. Okay, so consider a digital grade book and try to maybe have one point person for entering grades instead of trying to give teachers access from wherever they might be. Second thing, if I can get my computer to keep moving, 
is who's going to manage the faculty to ensure they're following through. While I absolutely wish that we were in a world that everyone did the job that they were supposed to be doing, we know that's not true. So who's your point person? Do you have a director of education? Do you have a program manager? Is it the campus director? Are you a small school? But make sure there's somebody following up behind the teachers to make sure the grades are being entered in, that the synchronous sessions are happening. You, you gotta spot check this stuff because what I will say is people get lazy when they're working from home. We have to make sure that the students are getting everything and that it's organized and that you guys are delivering what you say you're going to deliver online because that too the accreditors are going to come right after you if you don't okay so make sure you've got somebody following through that how many faculty will you employ fuzzy question right everybody is worried about job security right now but the reality is while most schools are doing a 1 to 15 1 to 20 ratio in career and technical training online you don't need that you really can do a one to 30, one to 35, which means you can cut some costs, which is probably really important right now. So if you are a school leader, start thinking about this. You don't necessarily have to have the same teacher teaching the same group as before. You can combine groups in different ways now and have one teacher managing it all because they're not just standing in front of a classroom anymore, okay? So consider that. Um, I know that's a big ugly that nobody wants to think about, but you don't actually have to keep every single person going when everyone is struggling right now. I mean, I know as businesses, this is scary. We're going to lose students and you, you may lose some, some uh, revenue coming in. So we really have to think about that part too. Who is going to manually track the student hours, right? So you saw the worksheet that I showed you earlier, actually had the hours for the day there. And then same thing, we're gonna have one point person who is going to take every worksheet that the teachers upload, and they're going to put the hours in for the student manually so that the student is earning the hours as they go. That way you don't have 14 day policy issues, you don't have SAP issues because the students are continuing at a rate that they're supposed to be going from week to week. It also means your disbursements will come in as they're supposed to. So, you know, if you wait and then you wait for three weeks and you put all those hours in, disbursements might get stalled, the, you know, and nobody needs that. You need the revenue coming in from financial aid right now. Um, how are you going to verify student hours for accreditation? We talked about that earlier, but you do have to come up with one way that your school is going to do it. You shouldn't, not every teacher shouldn't have their own way. You guys have to embrace one policy and procedure and how you're going to do that as a school. And then finally, how are you going to save digital work? Are you going to get a business um, Dropbox account that has a ton of storage facility? Are you gonna use a cloud of some sort that teachers can upload into? You have to figure out how you're gonna save this work digitally, not on their personal devices, okay? So when students send something in, Ultimately, you, you, you need to be able to provide a file to an accreditor later, you know, during an audit or something like that. So you may want to actually have like a Dropbox account or something like that where every student has their own file and then teachers can actually just save it into there. So you got to come up with how you're going to do that is making sure you have a digital platform to save all of the student worksheets, the daily hour sheets, all of that stuff since people are now working from all over the place. Okay, so a couple more things to consider. Um, an online orientation for students. It can be a video, it can be a webinar like this, it can be um, a Zoom session, it can be whatever you want, but remember these students don't know how to actually be digital students for the most part. So we need to teach them how. We need to teach them how to use the apps, we need to teach them how to set up the email accounts. If they're new to MindTap, they need to learn how to use MindTap. If they're new to Lab, they need to learn how to use Lab. Um, they need to know the expectations. So you probably want to schedule a 30 to 45 minute online orientation. What I've seen one school do is um, I actually created the video for them and they uploaded it onto YouTube and then the students had a worksheet, a digital worksheet that they had to complete that if they weren't paying attention to the end, they could not have filled out. They then submitted it to the director of education and then he went live on their learning, their online learning for them. Like he, he, they're on lab, he added them to the correct path basically. So you need to think about something like that. Um, you don't have to stop enrolling, so consider virtual admissions. You can absolutely, you know, do video chats and FaceTime and that kind of stuff for admissions. Uh, I would, well, if you have the ability to still go record a virtual tour of the school so that your admissions reps can use something like that. That way they can still show the school, they can still kind of show the, what, the, what the building looks like and what the programs look like. So you don't have to stop admissions, just do virtual admissions, and you can always build enrolling starts if you're not doing that, because now it's online. They can start anytime okay um, another thing to consider is virtual tutoring we did mention that 
giving students the ability to access you beyond you know their synchronous sessions um, live demos if you've got teachers who are great on a camera absolutely this is the time to have them start recording demos so they can do a live demo on facebook or on social media or wherever they want but then record it and put it on your youtube so students can access that absolutely any time okay my internet's unstable i'm in key west we have some internet issues here so hopefully i'm you're still hearing what i'm saying um, and then finally, you probably want to do a training for best practices for teachers. Most career, um, especially cosmetology, beauty, spa, and wellness teachers have not ever taught online before. Um, so it's not fair to assume they know how. Okay, so we need to schedule some trainings for them. If you don't know, again, I do that. I'm happy to do that for your school. Um, but we, you should absolutely remember you need to train the teachers and not just expect that they know how to do this, that they know how to manage online learning. If we don't do that, everything we've talked about so far is probably not gonna go well because it, you can be as organized as you want, but if you haven't trained the teachers on how to do it, then it's gonna flop. So make sure that you are training your teachers continually and you're there to kind of really guide them and show them the way. Okay, so um, like I said, I knew I didn't have an hour worth of material, but I wanted to open up for questions, ideas. I know there's a few of you on this at this point. Has anybody tried anything else that's working for them? I did unmute everybody, so you can actually speak if you want. If you don't want to, that's okay too. Um, but uh, if, if does anybody else have any ideas or anything that they've tried or successes that you wanna share or failures that you wanna share so we can learn from your mistakes? I see nothing. Okay, so this is how you reach me, right? So that's my website. That's my email. That's all my social media. Um, I will be posting this onto YouTube today. Uh, so please share it with your superiors and your coworkers and and anybody else you might want to share it with, so that they have the information. And then if you have further questions, of course, reach out to me. Um, I'm always available and I am absolutely happy to answer questions and help you guys with whatever you need. So that's what I have for you. Um, I appreciate those of you that came and that you joined us or that you joined me and the few of you that are here. I, I hope, you know, I wish you guys luck in everything. And again, if you have any questions, reach out and I'm happy to talk about this stuff further with you. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you so much for coming, Noelia. Thank <laughs> you.